हम मजबूर हो के किया उसके साथ जो कुछ भी किया उसने हमारी इज्जत रो ली है हम गैरतमंद हैं वो घर से क्यों गई थी हम हलाक हलाल की मजदूरी करके उनको खिलाता था उसने आराम दिखाया मुझे हम गैरतमंद हैं मुझे ये बर्दाश्त नहीं होता आराम नजर आए एक मन दूध है उसके एक कतरा फेंक दो पेशाब का वो सारे का सारा तबाह हो जाता है इसने ये किया सबका सब, सब तबाह कर दिया हक हलाल की मजदूरी मेरी तबाह कर दिया मैंने बोला नहीं मैं खुद मारूंगा आपको मेरी बेटियां मैं खुद मारूंगा आपको Well, good morning, everyone. It may be rainy and cold outside, but it's hot in here, and we're going to continue that going. I'm Cynthia McFadden. Shamin, it is such a pleasure to be on this stage with you. I have admired your work for many, many years. Your singular voice, the power of one, is so important. and i think the conversation we have this morning will both shed some light on some really tragic difficult circumstances and some hope as well so you directed this film i did i directed and this you film. won the academy award for it let's hear it <laughs> i should also say it was her second academy award <laughs> and last night This film was nominated for a Peabody, which I sincerely hope it will win. Thank you. Tell us about the story. Why you made this film? You know, um, I think one of the most important ways to tackle an issue is to put a voice and a face in front of it. And the voice and the face of this film is 18-year-old Saba, who had the courage to allow us to document her story. She really wanted that what had happened to her wouldn't happen to anyone else, and so she decided that she would allow us to fight. uh film her fighting this battle that she was having in the court system because she wanted to send her father and her uncle to jail the father we just heard from yes explain him to us you know um for all of us um it's it's very easy to demonize someone like sabha's father because we haven't walked in his shoes but let me tell you something i learned very early on in my career it's that if you've never seen the light one must not expect you to know what the light is like if you've always lived in darkness if the world around you has always taught you that you must control women that you must create an environment that if a woman steps across a line there should be retribution and if other people encourage you to do that then that's your world view for sabha's father what he did was honorable to us it is not honorable and because Saba's father the family said yes you must uh, teach Saba a lesson because she chose to marry uh, on her free will he went ahead and did this and the most important thing is that if Saba's father was let off uh without a jail sentence which he was because there was a lacuna in the law uh which allowed for forgiveness so if a father killed his daughter his wife could forgive him uh there was a lacuna in the law and that's why saba wanted her story told she wanted the law changed so just for those of you who have not seen the film and for those of you who have not seen the film you must see the film it's 21 minutes and you will not be able to take your eyes away her father and her uncle father shoots her in the head yes puts her in a gunny bag throws her in the river she miraculously survives lands up in the hospital and she decides to press charges the most important thing is the men helped her uh, a lawyer fought her case the police officer arrested the father and the uncle but the community they pressured her to forgive and there's a scene in the film where she's forced to forgive the father and she says to the camera i've forgiven him for the world but in my heart he is unforgiven but the but the kind of silver lining in all of this is that saba's singular voice the fact that she had the courage to speak out has changed the law for honor killings in pakistan <laughs> you
You know, um, I would say two singular well, voices, wouldn't well, you? Saba's well, courage and your courage well, in telling this story. Well, I, I do think that winning an Academy Award really helps uh, <laughs> because the Prime Minister of the country, uh, who I must really give credit to, uh, watched the film. Uh, the first screening of the film was held at the Prime Minister's Secretariat, and he said something very important, uh, which is there is no honor in honor killing. Yeah. It, well. And you know, it, 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 was, it was very powerful to see in the film the pressure put on Saba to forgive. I mean, she married the, the man of her choice, the man she was in love with. She went and lived with his family. And his family, which obviously was terribly distressed by what had happened, said, we live in this community. If you don't forgive, we can't go on. So she was being pressured even by people who loved and cared about her to forgive. You know, the Saba story is one that is replicating across Pakistan, and, and the reason is that the world is really changing. You can no longer tell women that you must toe the line, because you know, 80% of Pakistan has now cell phones. So women have access to the outside world that they never had before. So even if they're illiterate, they can watch a video, they can call somebody, and they know what their rights are. They're beginning to understand them. And so this patriarchal, conservative kind of stronghold that the men have, the cracks are emerging. And they don't know how to handle all these young women who want to go to school, who want to work, who have the right to divorce and want to exercise it. And there are men like your father, yeah. who had five daughters, and tell us about his philosophy about women in Pakistan. First of all, my father was in the elusive search of a boy, uh, so he continued to have girls. Um, and you know, the, the, it's so important to have a male figure in your life that supports you and encourages you and says that you can be as badass as you want to be, which is what my father said to me when I was 17 years old. You know, I'm the kind of person who gets into a lot of trouble, as you can imagine. And so I, I would get into a lot of trouble. You know, I would be saying things I shouldn't be saying. I should be... Um, kind of shaking the status quo. And when I was 17, my father, essentially, I landed into trouble. I, I, I wrote a piece I shouldn't have written technically about and named and shamed some people. And my father said, you know what? Amplify that voice. Speak the truth, and I will stand with you. And that's why this is the message I am giving young women in Pakistan and, and, and in the Muslim world as well. Speak your mind. Speak the truth, and the world will stand with you. You know, I think it's important, just spend a moment on where this sense of honor, misplaced though it, it might be, where this sense of honor comes from. I think many people think it's part of Islam. Is it? It's a very cultural thing, um, honor. So you think about uh, it being in Muslim countries, yes. But the issue of honor is very big in India as well, in Hindu and Sikh communities as well. The issue of honor, I think, stems from decades old kind of um, this idea that uh, you have to protect women. And in protecting women, somehow the honor rests with the man. And, and so the way I look at it is, well, if the honor rests with the man, then the man should be take, going the extra distance to actually help the woman instead of making her, um, making her silent, instead of taking away those rights from her. And that's why this misplaced sense of honor that exists needs to be broken. And I think that now that you have so many women who are speaking up, speaking out, stepping out of the darkness into the light, that men are beginning to realize that actually this concept of honor that they've had for centuries is not something that they can hold on to. So Saba, the law changed. Talk to, talk to us for a moment about her sense of, of what her, the using the power of her voice and her story means to her. Well, you know, Saba's had a lot of issues because she chose to speak up and speak out. Um, so she became the symbol in her, society, in her community. For a while, she really had to keep a very low profile. She didn't want to attract extra attention. But she said to us so often, um, that she's wanted to have a daughter, which she's now given birth to, and she wants that daughter to be able to speak her mind, to go to school, to work, to have all of the freedoms she did not have. And she also knows that because she spoke up and 
uh, spoke out that she is enabling her daughter to do the same when she grows up. And so that's such an important message for that community. And for many other people's daughters as well. I, you know, so many of your films focus really on women taking their own their own back, if you will. And I want to go to a, a clip of a film that you made um, about Pakistan's female, this may surprise you, Pakistan's female anti-terrorism police force in, in the northern Pakistan. It's an extraordinary film. Take a look. से जो दो छोटे भाई हैं वो दोनों आर्मी में और मुझे भी आर्मी में जाने का बहुत शौक था पर वो पूरा ना हो सका और इसलिए मैंने पुलिस ज्वाइन कर ली ये बिल्कुल सच है कि फीमेल में मैं पहली हूँ अपनी फैमिली में जो पुलिस में आई हूँ पहले तो हमारे कजन वगैरह ही लोग नहीं मान रहे थे कि वो अब ये जाएगी अब बाहर जाएगी जॉब के लिए जाएगी वो भी मर्दों के साथ जाएगी फिर जब मेरे अबू ने कहा कि जब मैं कुछ नहीं कह रहा तो तुम लोग कौन होते हो तो बस उसके बाद किसी ने कुछ नहीं कहा नाम तमन्ना क्लीन फोर्स के पी के ये कोई खुदा न खासा हम कोई इसका कोई शो पीज इनको नहीं बना रहे हैं इन शाह तला दे विल बी द रियल फाइटर्स ये हमारी फ्रंट ही होंगी और इन शाह तला रहेंगी और अभी भी हैं Talk about blowing the concept, the stereotype. Talk to us about why this police unit was formed. Firstly, let me just clarify why the women's faces are covered. They belong to an anti-terrorism squad, and they do not want to be recognized because police officers in their areas are targeted and killed, and so they want to protect their identities. So they come from one of the most conservative parts of the country, and uh, where you find that uh, you know the scale of violence is 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 very much high, and and so. Um, Um, the police department decided that they would recruit women and train them to be part of the anti-terrorism squad, precisely because I know it's, this is an alien concept for many people. But because when uh, the men go on raids um, in that conservative area, they cannot enter a house first. Because of uh, this system of parda, where men and women cannot interact with each other, the women have to go first. So actually, these women lead the anti-terrorism squad, and the men go behind them. Um, Woohoo! And I mean, it's it, it's very impressive. The I think it's, um, it's Sergeant Hassan who yes. says, "Listen, we don't want these women to just be showpieces. We need them on the front lines." Oh my God, I have seen these women. We've spent a lot of time with them. They are seriously badass women, and they're <laughs> and, and and I'll tell you why. These women don't come from the kind of families or places where, for example, I grew up in a fairly progressive liberal area. They come from small towns and villages in some of the most conservative parts of Pakistan, and they've taken it. upon themselves to be the frontline fighters in this war against terrorism and that says a lot about their spirit their intention and the intention of the men who are training them so things are changing absolutely things are changing look you cannot hold women back you just cannot any war the world has changed so much and even in a, even in parts of pakistan i mean how how are you going to hold people back in 2017 where women are and this generation especially speak their minds they are not afraid you know maybe 10 15 years ago women would be like oh i don't know what's going to happen what my father's going to say now they're like we don't really care we know what our rights are and i think that's the most important thing you're you're seeing across the country not just in big cities not just women who are exposed yesterday a woman was gang raped uh, in a part of pakistan she went on television and she said i want justice you would have never ever seen that 10 15 years ago this these women they are going to push the envelope they are going to bring about change and the men i'm so sorry to let them know they're just going to have to hang back <laughs> or try to keep up <laughs> as i say so much of your work is about often taking the most desperate circumstances and finding 
women who can help us understand that they actually can reclaim their own power. I want to throw to another, a final clip of a woman who started a group in her community to advocate for women's rights. Take a look. किसी भी औरत को अगर उसकी मनचाही जिंदगी नहीं मिलती या फिर उसके साथ जुल्म ज्यादती होती है चाहे वो बात बात ही क्यों ना तलख हो तो मैं उसे डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस ही कंसीडर करती हूँ तो ओवरऑल बचपन तो मैंने देखा ही नहीं है क्योंकि मैं तेरह साल की उम्र से ही शादीशुदा जिंदगी में दिखेल दी गई थी खुला का फैसला मेरी जिंदगी का तलख तरीन फैसला था क्योंकि इसमें मेरे पेरेंट्स मुझसे रूट गए थे मेरे भाई बहनों ने मुझसे बात करना छोड़ दी थी मेरी बात कोई नहीं सुन रहा क्यों मैं भी तो तकलीफ में हूँ मुझे भी तो सहना पड़ रहा है अल्लाह ने हिम्मत दी बस कि मुझे खड़ा होना है अपने लिए अपने लिए आवाज़ उठानी है बात तो फिर ये होता है कि हमारी भी कुछ गलतियाँ होती हैं हम वक्त पर अपनी आवाज़ उठाती नहीं है हम बात करती नहीं है अचानक से मेरे जहन में ख्याल आया कि कम अज़ कम तब मैंने उसे जर्गी का नाम नहीं दिया था हमने बस एक ग्रुप बनाया था कि इसमें हम अपने मसाइल डिस्कस करेंगे और हल निकालने की कोशिश करेंगे और बज दफ़ा तो औरतों ने भी काफ़ी मजाक हुआ है कि ये क्या हमारा फैसला करेंगी और ये हमारे लिए क्या कर सकती हैं जो आज तक मर्द नहीं कर पाए वो औरत कैसे कर सकती है मेरी एक अदना सी कोशिश है शायद मैं बारिश का वो पहला कतरा बनी हूँ या बनना चाहती हूँ कि जो उठे और जो बाकी के कतरों से भी कहे कि बरसो कुछ नहीं है हम बरसेंगे हम मिलके बरसेंगे तो दरिया बन सकती है ओके द फर्स्ट ड्रॉप ऑफ रेन एंड आई मीन एवरीबॉडी कैन बी दैट वरएवर दे आर um it it took enormous courage i mean i'm also very moved by her saying that divorcing her husband was the worst thing she ever did i mean this is this is not an easy path Absolutely, it's not an easy path. But what the Basum has been able to do is that in the Valley of Swat, uh, justice was always dispensed by male members. And she said, "Hang on a second. Why can't women do so?" And she gathered 25 women in the community and decided that, you know what? We're not going to take power away from the men. We're just going to have a parallel system, and women can come to us. And they started coming. to them and they have solved some very high profile cases and gained so much respect that she has now been invited to sit on the men's uh, panel as well so so you know the, the thing about her is she said i've decided that i've had enough and i want to change the lives of other women and i didn't know how to do it i just came up with an idea i gathered some women together and here we are today and i think that's an important thing most women think that huh, this is such an enormous problem what am i going to do taking that first step is always the hardest but eventually if you have the determination and it doesn't matter uh, what anyone says you'll get to the goal that you want to get to so in our last moment talk to us about the price of this for you hmm. um well it's not always um easy to tell the truth um it comes with uh um great responsibility and 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 repercussions um and uh, you know there are many uh, in my country that celebrate my voice and the change that i have been able uh, to bring um i've also empowered others to be storytellers uh, training a whole new generation of filmmakers in pakistan but there are also others who think that my work should be silenced i should be silenced um but you know in the dead of the night i always prefer to listen to the voices that are cheering me on because those are the ones that are going to help me get to the finish line i am sure i speak for our audience when i say we are grateful for your work we are grateful for your testimony and just keep doing it let's go for academy award number 3 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>